Hi all, I wanted to go through uh, one surgical method of correcting hematode deformity. You can see in this picture that there's involvement at the PIP joint, which is quite obvious, and but also at the metatarsophalangeal joint. When testing at the metatarsophalangeal joint, it was actually quite reducible, i.e. flexible, so I was able to get that into a rectus position quite easily. At the PIP joint, it was uh, a rigid deformity uh, and very difficult to, to reduce. We can see on x-ray uh, that all is A-OK -okay at the metatarsophalangeal joint level. Uh, there's no subluxation or dislocation. Uh, and the PIP joint deformity is actually pretty hard to see on the DP view, but it's definitely obvious on the medial oblique view. So let's get started on the procedure itself. Because at the MTPJ level, uh, the deformity is flexible, um, a soft tissue release is plenty to get that into a rectus position. So with the 19 gauge needle, uh, I've made a small little incision and I am now cutting the uh, extensor digitorum longus tendon. Um, with this percutaneous uh, tenotomy, it is quite minimally invasive and it was quite easy to get the MTPJ to a, a rectus position. It's uh, so much easier to correct um, deformities at this level when they're flexible um, because once again it's just a soft tissue procedure and there's no reason um, to perform any uh, osteotomies at the metatarsal or uh, the phalanx. Now let's get to the interesting part which is at the PIP joint. We are going to make an elliptical incision. Uh, we've just drawn that on the PIP joint now. I'm going to cut that out with a 15 blade. Uh, we're going to use the, the pickups pick in the 15 blade to, to remove that, that portion of skin. The reason I make the, uh, the ellipse is so that there isn't any redundant skin uh, when I'm uh, suturing it back up. Do you do longitudinal or transverse for your mallet? Just a simple mallet? Ah, transverse. Yeah. yeah. You married? Yeah, same. Someone had said to me that I uh, refused to do transverse incisions because it's in a whole project. Once the skin is removed, you just use the, the 15 blade just to underscore the, uh, the superficial fibres that are attaching the uh, the dermal layer to the superficial fascia. How's that looking, um, Steph? Can we still My surgical assistant now has just got the skin hooks just to retract the skin away from the superficial fascia. We're cutting into the, uh, the extensor tendon through a transverse incision just to expose the PIP joint. We're now um, releasing the joint capsule and you can see that the joint is now exposed. We are using the rongeurs to remove the articular cartilage from the head of the proximal phalanx and also the base of the intermediate phalanx. The actual real Dr. Oz? Yeah, the American guy. The American guy? They do scream some of them, don't they? You know that sometimes you look at something, and I'll go back and have a look at it, and they've taken it off or it made it really hard to find. Mm, they do do they that. They do do that, yeah. Change the search parameters mm. or something, I don't know. Technology's not my fault. I can see Jeff, you're good. Mm -hmm. There are a number of ways um, to fixate a fusion site. Uh, what we're going to use is a 1.4 millimeter smooth K wire, um, and that's going to be placed in situ, which means um, it won't be exposed. Um, a lot of surgeons will do. Uh, will use the KY but it will be percutaneous and they'll pull that out after six weeks. 
Uh, in this case, we're going to, to keep it internal so we don't have to pull the, the wire out. It means that the, uh, the patient will be able to emulate um, in a normal shoe a lot sooner um, as the wire doesn't need to be poking out the end of the toe. So the wire uh, was bent, um, inserted into the proximal phalanx and now it will be put into the base of the intermediate phalanx and pretty much clicked into place. Once the wire is positioned adequately and the two bony surfaces are, um, are closed up nicely, we will start to suture up the extensor tendon again. Would you want to have a choice me doing your steering or this? Yeah. Probably going to do it on your toe. Yes. You know, there's nothing to smell like, at least. No, no. Yeah, it's going to smell no way to smell like it. Now that uh, the tendon was repaired and we used 2-0 Vicryl Suture to do that, we're going to start with the skin and uh, we're using 3-0 Monocryl here which is also an absorbable suture. The technique is a running subcuticular method and um, cosmetically they end up looking pretty good uh, with just a fine white line once uh, the scar has completely healed. I don't tie knots at the end, uh, I just hold the ends with uh, the stereo strips. Look at those stereos there, Mo. Good long ones. Thank you. They're right in front of me, those ones. Are good. <laughs> The last thing to do now is to apply the stereo strips, uh, which, will, which will support the um, the skin closure, and to take the uh, the toe down. It's very important to take the toe down because soft tissue always wants to, to go back to its abnormal position. So where I had done the percutaneous extensor tenotomy, that tendon will heal back up again, but we wanted to heal back elongated. Uh, and not um, retracted like how it was. So we're going to use some short steries and some long steries uh, to take that toe down and then uh, apply a Jones compressive uh, dressing on top and the patient will be reviewed in one week. So guys that is pretty much how you perform a PIP joint arthrodesis or fusion um, with percutaneous release of the sensor digitorum longus of the second. Thank you. Yep, thank you.